So in this tutorial we are going to go over some different options and formats for importing and exporting objects in Blender. Uh, so first thing that we are going to do is click File, Import, and let's first import FBX file. Now I have here prepared my uh, door FBX file and on the right side you will see your import options. So let me uh, increase the size of these windows. Uh, so the general layout is that on the right side you'll have the details of the FBX file that you're importing. At the top you have basically your search uh, for the folder and then you can manually search uh, the name. And on the left you have your disk, your system files and your recently uh, accessed folders so you have an easier time accessing files. So the details for the FBX that you're importing will, will be in here and you can also have some presets if you uh, have some settings that you use frequently and first we have a, what we want to include uh, based of or uh, what we want to include for the geometry so we have custom normals and some other properties which are not that important usually you won't touch this much uh, then you have your transform so this might be important depending on from which software you're imp importing to blender because fbx file can uh, have different options for different uh, projects so in some other software the scale might be a hundred times uh, smaller than blender so you might set the scale to 100 and this will make it uh, the same size in blender as is uh, as it is in another software uh, you can also apply the transform and you have manual orientation and this is useful if you are importing again from another software that maybe has up and forward axes uh, different than what blender uses uh, the next two things are animations. So FBX supports uh, animations. That means that not only can you import the geometry, you can also import any animation data. And these settings uh, basically let you to offset the animation. And then you have some options for specifically the rig of, of the animation. So uh, the first thing here, we have ignore leaf bones. Basically what leaf bones are is that if you have your bones, so bone in Blender will look like this. And let's say this is the default bone. Uh, when we import this FBX, if we enable ignore leaf bones, we are going to basically add another bone in here uh, to basically make it easier to show where the actual bone is. Uh, I usually do not enable this option, but you can. There is some uh, use for it. Uh, there is also some options for connecting children. So each bone. Uh, needs to be cre connected to another bone usually and there is one root so uh, armatures and rigs in blender are basically in the hierarchy so that means that you have child parent relationships and this can force the children to be connected even if they are not uh, and there is also automatic bond orientation and this is basically blender is trying to figure out uh, the correct bond uh, orientations uh, depending on the on, from where you took the FBX file because uh, yeah different uh, software uses different primary bone and secondary bone axis which is basically if we let's say add our bone again and let's say this is the local axis of our bone and we can make it this to be x this to be y and then we can make this one to be z and some software might use uh, this axis for primary and maybe this for secondary some other software might use this primary but this secondary so you would basically set maybe your secondary to z axis instead of x axis uh, so this is basically what you are dealing with when you are editing the armature bone axis and that's uh, similar also for orientation some software uh, sees uh, y as up and z aside but blender uses uh, z as up so it all depends on which software you're using so let's uh, import our FBX and let's see what we get. Uh, so we can see a few things. First, it is separate objects, which is good. Uh, if objects were separated in some other software, you want to import it separated in Blender. Uh, this is a good feature to have, so we have everything separated, but it is pink color, which we don't uh, really want. Pink color basically in Blender means that the, some textures are missing. So if we click on shading and let's uh, click F or uh, delete on the numpad to zoom in and in here we can see that when we select one of the objects that we have our door one color png and it seems like it 
uh, the, the location is not right so we can click on the little folder button and then let's click to source and go back and uh, from the software that I imported we have two separate files one for the FBX file and then one for textures and in here we can see what our door one color so let's open it up and we can see that this fixed a lot now it's a bit too shiny I don't think the door uh, should look like this so we're gonna see how to fix it but we can see how just adding this material we fixed basically uh, at least the color portion and we can see that it, everything is already kind of set up now FPX will never give you some sophisticated uh, uh, shaders or materials it can work with some basic stuff like uh, UVs we have here some mapping and then our material but it won't give you some crazy uh, combination of nodes since it's just uh, not created for that so you will get something simple like this and let's also do the normal since we can see that uh, our normals are not right so let's open it up and now this should be better and also we can change color space to uh, non-color uh, and let's go up and see what else we can change so we can see that it's not uh, still not right so let's click on our image duplicate it and we can open it up and here we can take roughness so one good thing that we can do here is connect roughness in here and we also want it to be non-color and I think maybe the normal does not need to be non-color but uh, RGB uh, so yeah this looks a bit more like doors and uh, yeah basically that is it so since this FBX file specifically did not have any animations we do not have them but uh, we have sh uh, our shader our textures but yeah FBX will sometimes give you missing missing materials and stuff like that or missing textures so we have uh, yeah our textures materials objects they are separated and also if you click on the door we can see that there is a hierarchy so if I move the door the handle is also moving but handle is a separate object so the hierarchy is also preserved between the objects in the FBX file so that's all well and good so let's uh, click A and then X to delete our door A basically is a shortcut to select everything in the scene and then X to delete and let's click file import and let's import our GLTF so FBX was, is usually one of the most used formats in uh, yeah in blender and in most other software still uh but there is also some others so there is gltf now we can see that here we don't have that much options so first option is just that we can pack images or textures into that, that blend file so you can pack your textures in, inside just one blender file or you can keep them separate so that is basically option in here there is shading options if you just want everything to be flat or you just want to use normal so if you have the scene where you already set up which uh, uh, which parts of the mesh will be uh, smooth shaded and which were flat shaded you want to leave this and use normal data and everything else I think we can leave up there so let's click import and it needs a second to load but we can see it looks a bit better than the FPX that we imported where we have our materials and GLTF can support a bit more complicated setups so in here we can see we have separate color normal map and also separate GLTF material output for our occlusion which we don't have in here so this looks all well and good we can see it's already set up uh, the materials and everything uh, now we can see there is some problems so we can see that some objects look like this that they're kind of weirdly see-through but not really and what is happening there that if you click on that and scroll down you can see that blending mode is on alpha blend and we need to pack so that is one of the biggest problems I noticed with uh, this format and you can see it's happening in here probably uh, yeah this one is on alpha blend let's set it to pack and now everything else is on pack so that is the main problem everything else looks fine there is also one thing that is happening so we have these objects that are basically uh, like empty object that can hold uh, or uh, be a parent so we can attach stuff onto it so we can see how this one object is attached to this parent and our import basically works like that where 
uh, each object has its own uh, empty objects that he is attached to and then this empty object is attached to a few more empty objects. Now this can be inconvenient if you really don't want to deal with the empty objects but it can also be convenient where everything is kind of separate and you have uh, empty objects for each of your uh, your separate meshes. So this is GLTF, pretty nice. Uh, generally not bad, it can also support animations. It works similar to FBX and it is easier to convert to other formats but it's still not widely supported so some software might have uh, limited usability so we also saw you know, on our import that there's uh, little options for importing and there will be a bit more options for export but uh, that is kind of the main drawback where it is not still widely supported it's kind of a newer format so let's click A to select everything click X and delete and now I'm going to click file import and the last object that you're going to check is our OBJ so let's find a front OBJ let's import this guy and in here we can see that we all don't have almost anything so OBJ is a bit simpler than FBX and GLTF in the, the way that it does not support uh, animation so it's basically mesh uh, f just for meshes so if I click import we can see we have our astronaut guy and there is some stuff preserved like materials but usually you won't have any textures preserved you'll have uh, only the materials and the mesh and everything will work fine so FBX there's nothing much to talk about I don't think it even pre uh, creates empty objects or stuff like that you'll just get your mesh or groups of meshes right now this uh, this character is just one mesh but you'll just get your groups of meshes you'll get your materials and that's about it basically so now that we generally know uh, these three main uh, formats, let's try to export now. So first let's check out the OBJ. Let's say that we want to export in here. And so there is few options. So first uh, we have animation. Now this might look weird uh, that there is this animation tab even if I said that there is no animation. And basically there is not. Uh, what is happening here is that you can select uh, frames and then each frame will be exported as a separate object. So this is good if you want for some reason like per frame object exported, but this is not actually exporting your animations. Uh, so it will just export the pose of that of the character in that specific frame. So usually you'll have this disabled. Uh, next you of course have uh, the options to change the axis for forward and up. If you're exporting it for some specific software that has different yeah, uh, axes than Blender. Uh, you have your scales, you can also click on selected only. So if you have let's say 10 OBJ files in your project but you just want to export let's say two that you selected. You'd click on selected only so you don't export everything. You have apply modifiers so if you have any specific modifiers uh, in here that are applied to your object you can apply them. And the rest is just something for the geometry, your coordinates, normals, materials, uh, some basic stuff. And then grouping, if you want some groups like object groups, material groups, uh, you can export it in here also. So that's OBJ. Let's also go to our FBX. And let's go in here. So here it has a bit more stuff to do. So we have our selected objects. Of course, for each of those, you have... Uh, uh, presets so I have one preset that I usually use for exporting vehicles rig rigged vehicles but you can create your own by clicking plus in here and whatever settings you had in here it will be added uh, in a list uh, so we have these selected objects we can also select let's say we select part of the scene but maybe we don't want to export lamps and we don't want to manually deselect them from the scene we can just uh, hold shift and click and then the lamps are disabled uh, but if you click without the shift it will just uh, select one of these. Uh, usually if you're exporting characters it will look something like this, so you want your arm arm armature, you want your mesh and that's basically all. So next you have the sc scale, you have your axis uh, conversion and then you can use some different transforms for, for rotations. Uh, this usually you will leave, uh, leave as is and maybe try to change if you have any problems with your exported FBX files. And we have a geometry, apply modifiers that we had before. 
and some like triangle faces might be useful if you are exporting for a video game or something. Uh, and then you have your bone axis, since FBX supports animations, you will have your primary secondary bone axis that we talked before. And you can also add or not add leaf bones and only deform bones. So the, the bones in Blender can be deform or non deform bones. So non deform bone might be just a bone that controls other bones. Uh, so that on that on that bone you will never want to attach part of the mesh. So you can just export the deform bones if you want in here. And at last you have some options to export uh, baked animations. So you can select how simple you want your animation to be. So if you simplify animation too much, it might not look good, but it will be small, uh, small file size and uh, more performance. So this kind of a compromise, how much you want to simplify or how little. And you also have your NLA strips, which basically in Blender how you organize uh, animations. So it depends on how you created your animations and which type of animations you want to export, you will click in here. Uh, so let's cancel, that would be FBX. And the last one we have GLTF. So let's go in here. And in here we have a few things. First we have this format that can be binary, separate and embedded. And if you hover over any one of them, it is, it is pretty nicely explained on what it does. So efficient, portable, but difficult to edit since it is a single file. Then you have your separate where it exports JSON and texture data. This basically means that uh, you can easily then later change the textures and it will still import them automatically. Uh, while in here they'll be all the same files, so it will be harder to edit. And third one is everything is packed as JSON, which is less efficient, which meaning probably bigger memory size and uh, bigger import time, stuff like that, but a bit easier to edit. So this is a few options here. Uh, next thing that you have is something that we already talked before. You have selected objects, so you don't export the whole scene. You can export the collections, the scenes, and you have your transform, which doesn't give you much except if the plus y is up or not. And here we have our apply modifiers and some UVs, normals. And here we have materials. You have some uh, PBR extension since uh, PBR basically means physically based rendering, which is kind of a rendering uh, solution that most uh, most newer uh, software, 3D software uses. So in here we can uh, select uh, the formats or set to automatic. And if you want to export or not export the materials. Next you have your compression if you want to decrease the file size, but of course you lose a bit of quality. And then you have your animation and shape keys. So animation is similar thing to FBX. You can do analyze text. Uh, you can sample the animations. You have your shape keys, which is basically something like morphs where you can deform your mesh but not use uh, bones for it. So you can also save that information. And there is some skinning options for your bones and rigs depending on what you want to create. Uh, so that's about it for import and export in Blender. Uh, there is also a bunch more uh, import and export format, but these three are some of the most used ones.